Hey everybody. So thanks for joining me um, on this episode. Today I want to talk to you and show you how to go through and build a guardsman. It's going to be a super short, quick, easy video. I'm not expecting to make any ground shaking stuff here, but for those of you that are maybe intimidated and you're like, okay, what all comes on the sprue for the guardsman? What I get out of the start collecting box is actually worth it. I want to help you some of you guys out there. So if you are a brand new beginner looking to jump into Warhammer 40k or Warhammer 40k kill team, you just want to know how to put the Astro Militarum guys together. That's what this one's going to be pretty much showcasing for you. And fortunately, uh, something that's really good about these sprues is that they're all pretty much um, kind of not universal, but they all work pretty well. You get yourself five legs per each of these sprues here, and then you get yourself five torsos. That all the torsos are the same. The legs are a little bit different depending on like what stance they have. So like this one's a running stance here. This one's kind of more of a little bit of a walking stance. And then you got some other standing stances as well too. And then you get two of these sprues out of the kit. So I'm just gonna show you how to make a basic garden because once you're all said and done, you'll have your guy all built and ready to go. Just like all those bros over there. few different kind of tools you want to have at your disposal. A few that I use, and you'll probably see me use them in the video here, I use some different wire cutters or snippers. These help me get my pieces off of the sprue, help me get rid of some mold lines in some cases. Uh, phenomenal. These things have been with me since I started the hobby. Um, I've had them even longer than that, and I was actually using them to cut like actual bailing wire and stuff. But it works great for getting these guys off the plastic sprues themselves. I got some Citadel plastic glue. You can also do super glue if you want as well. Um, I just have this stuff on hand, I don't have very much of it, so hopefully it lasts me for the video, but I like to use this because essentially what it does is it acts as a catalyst. Once you stick it on the plastic pieces, it molds them together, and kind of like fuses them together, so it has a better stick. And being up in the South Dakota weather, um, when it gets cold outside, super glue likes to snap off in some cases. So if you do make mistakes and you're using super glue, just know that you can stick that bad boy in your freezer or stick it out in the snow or whatever, and you'll be able to take those parts apart just a little bit easier without your plastic fusing and melting together. Um, I do also like to have a box cutter or a sharp hobby knife. Um, I've got this one here that helps me get rid of some of the mold lines off of the side, so I probably seem to use that a little bit. And if you are a child or you are somebody like myself who might be afraid of cutting themselves too, good old fashioned sandpaper or a file. I've got this metal file on a multi-tool. It's got some lifting patterns of grading going crossing right here. So it helps me get a fine, uh, fine sand down on my model. So it helps me get rid of some of the lower spots. So if I don't want to use a knife to cut off the bits, I just sand it down and it works pretty stinking well too. I've been using this for the longest time. So those are the tools that I'm going to be using for this process. Uh, fingernails are also on there as well too. Just my hands, but yeah, that's all you need as far as to get started. And technically, you only need a couple of these. I've been able to do full projects with only the wire snippers themselves. Um, and it's, if you're building like easy to build stuff, you've got easy to build guardsmen, which they don't supply anymore, but if you happen to get a box of those five guys, you only need these. Um, so, yeah, here we go working on this sprue um, and I've already started building my team too. I've got myself a auto gun heavy weapon team. That's what I normally like to put with my infantry squad. I give them a heavy weapon team with an auto gun, give them just bare bones with a box caster and a sergeant and that is the same thing I'm going to do here too. So I'm going to build up eight other guardsmen and I have two left over that I can use for a special weapons team later down the road. But um, what you want to do is you want to kind of figure out, okay, what do I want to use for my legs? What kind of guy do I want to build? And for you guys and gals out there, I'm just going to build you a standard default guardsman. So, you know, looking at the legs, you kind of want to figure that out. You can kind of look at what foot has most of it on here. It's like this would be kind of a forward walking motion. This is be kind of like a running motion. This is just a little power stance. Power stance. A little bit of a walk here. So, let's just go through the normal power stance ones here. Easy to snip it off there. A lot of times, when you snip one off, you might be able to just work it back and forth. It is plastic after all, you might be able to snap some of these other sprue parts off. If so, if you look really closely, I know the 
the video quality is not necessarily the best. Let me see if I can get this focused in a little bit. Did you see those little, little doodads on there? Those are mold lines. You want to try and get rid of those the best you can. So that's where, you know, using, using these, you can just simply break it across there. You can even snip it off just a little bit more. Again, as close as you can to being off, use your fingernail if you want to. I've done that a lot of times. Otherwise, you can just use your file, just rake it across the foot. I'm sure, it gets rid of some of the sole of your foot, but it uh, gets rid of that terrible little little bump there that you don't want to have. And on the other side, which I haven't done yet, too, take this. Now, I recommend trying to stay as safe as possible. Always try to cut away from yourself. Um, it's not the best angle here for you guys to see. It's a little better. You pretty much just want to make sure that you are cutting it down and cutting it off and essentially just like keeping the flat bit here against it. Top here, I've got another one of those. I'll just since I got this out already. There we go. You want to make sure these things are flat because you're going to end up gluing other pieces to it and so you, if you leave any of those bumps that's what i did my very first infantry squad i left a lot of those mold line bumps on there because it's like yeah good enough i didn't have all my tools with me at the time and i wasn't too confident in my ability to scrape them off with these uh, without snipping the entire model I had a bunch of bumps so my guys didn't actually attach good enough and they didn't have enough solid of a bond so keep that in mind make sure you get rid of those little nubbins all right so i've got legs Torsos, super easy. I love the Cadian torsos because you just simply push back and forth, back and forth. You only got those small little sprue bits holding it onto there so you can spin it out of there. I love that. You pretty much got it. completely clean. You put your thumb across it. You can see where the sprue was on there, where the mold was at. But it leaves nothing. And then see, this part will stick on there. And that's where you don't want to leave a bump at. Now the head. This is a lot of personalization. Um, if you want to be cool, you can use certain heads. If you want to be normal though, you probably just want to grab one of these guys off here. And again, I like the whole little twisty motion with it. Back and forth, back and forth. Anywhere I can, I try to do the back and forth because it makes cleanup so much better and it's less work for me to have to do on mold lines. It's a little bit more work to get twisted out of there. And sometimes it doesn't always come out perfect. As you can see, he's got that little bit still on his chin. Well, let's just use this to snip that off the rest of the way. For the top of the helmet though, it's pretty good. It's right underneath his chin though, it's a pain in the butt. comes like sanding or snipping these things off less is more in most cases go small little bit check it see if you like it small little bit check it see if you like it because if you go too far you're not getting that plastic back there you go got my Gideon head last gun time so it's a bunch of different options I've already used one on my guys over there and uh do I want this guy to be bayonet or no Technically, it's not really going to change too much, but I like the power stance he has. This one looks like it's a little bit more aiming, like he's got it up on his shoulder. So I think I'll go with this last gun here. So let's go ahead and snip this bit off right here. And you know, I'm just going to 
snip the whole thing. Here's another thing. So you don't have to snip it as close if you're not super confident in your ability. Snip up here. And then, uh, yeah. Rotate it off. Now, something you'll see too, and I highly recommend when you're first building these guys out, you make sure you correspond the arm with the last gun that you're next to. Because if you don't, it's going to screw you over. Because these fit specifically with these arms. So, twist this off. I made that mistake with my early. I just cut all the arms, cut all the last guns out, didn't keep track of which went with where, and uh, yeah, it was a guessing game. I had to do a lot of dry fitting. And then you got that chunk still up here, you just twist that off. Just as if it was on the sprue still. Boom. Barely anything on there. This one's still got some gunk on there, so let's sand that down. So this specific so shoulder uh, bothers me a little bit because it's kind of a line right there. It just it's really jacked up. I think I'm gonna go over with the same file here. But... Very, very careful if you are cutting to it yourself. Try not to if you can. What you're going to do is small little movements. I was talking to Boy Scouts too, like cut everything yourself, you know, and stay out of your own blood zone. So make sure that if you are going to go through, if it's going to jump or skip or whatever, you're not going to be doing huge movements that are going to cut you. Best as I can. Good quality. And yeah, this one's pretty much good. Okay. And the arm too. Let's check it out. Get that little small little tidbit there. And just a little bit of scraping works. I don't feel bad if you still see something like the little, little particle where like the mold line was at because once you're done with these guys you're going to paint them up and give them a nice little sheen here so that way you can't tell oh yeah. that's where I cut my guys little nubbins off or that's where I had it at. Double check, make sure everything looks good for you before you start the gluing process. Yeah. Everything's looking good to me. When it goes on here, people talk about dry fitting. Dry fitting is just where you check to make sure everything's going to line up the way you want to on the bodies. You'll kind of get to see the angles like certain guns, depending on how they're set up, like this one here. It's going to be a little bit more of like my guy's going to be aiming down the sides with it, so once I stick the arm and the gun together, it's going to be popped up a little bit more. Um, let me see if I can find a model that... Yeah, I don't have one. I don't have one over here at least, but one of the guys, this is the gun where it's kind of like up close, and his chin's kind of like sitting on it, so it looks like he's aiming a little bit better down it. But yeah, I recommend for each guardsman, go ahead and get the pieces out because that's going to help you with saving some glue in the long run. That's going to make sure you have all the pieces set together. And if you are just now starting off, you don't want to mix those arms and the guns up because that'll really jack things up for you.
But yeah, glue time. So I am running very, very low on this glue. I've really got any left in there. But this thing has blasted me several armies. <laughs> I've built out of these two bottles here. I built from my two years ago, my first strike starter box, eighth edition for my Space Marines, all the way up to where I'm at right now. Um, got 1,500 points of Space Marines, got about 1,000 Guardsmen, um, three other combat patrol levels for Orcs and Custodes and Necrons and another startup Space Marine, different faction. Uh, either, anyway, this stuff, you can get a lot out of it. Um, but again, you can use super glue if you want to, you can use this. So sorry for those of you that if you see me struggling with this glue, I don't really know how to fast forward to this. So feel free to skip ahead if you want, but essentially you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit. I'm gonna clean the tip off of this because sometimes the glue looks to get crusted on there. Now, I'm building one at a time, so you guys can see this here. Uh, what I did on my, when I was streaming on Twitch with those guys, what I brought up there is a lot of times it is good to do an assembly line where you cut all the pieces out and you have all your gardens set together because it does take a little bit of time for this glue to dry. You can still give a little bit set, but you can stick it on there as you see. Ain't coming off. Uh, but you can move it around a little bit. Um, fix it so if you don't like where his little bit is coming out there move it if you want to but if you are building multiple models you can then just set this off go to your next torso leg combo glue that together set it down next torso leg set it down um, for this video I'm not going to do that I'm just going to do this simple little bit here but if you try to work too fast you'll get to a situation where, okay, I've got one guardsman and I'm trying to put everything on there and it's all falling apart on me. You don't want that. I usually save the head for last, um, but you can do head if you want to here because it all kind of like sticks together pretty well. The gun and the arm is usually the hardest part, in my opinion, for getting onto here. And I usually do both at the same time. So I start with this one here. Just a little bit, not a lot. Just a little bit, not a lot. And then I put a little bit on the uh, where the hand is over here, because that's where I'm gonna glue the left arm to the rest of this. So it kind of all gets you three different points set together. You got a point on the shoulder here with this glass gun. I'm gonna sit right here. Just like that. So I'm just going to sit right here with that glue, and then you're going to kind of attach it to that hand. Oh, I guess when this one's not the one where it's aiming, I guess it's just more of a resting stance. That regardless, it'll still be a standard looking guard. And as you can see, a lot of this is starting to come apart from one another. But that's the beautiful thing with this plastic glue that I love, is it gives you some play. about to play with a little bit too much and I didn't put enough glue on this here so let's get a little bit more on here
to move around to where you want it exactly at. Look at this open. Standing Katie and Guards can not help you. Guns at. <laughs> yeah. stuff and just super glue their models to the base um, I don't personally do that um, or at least not with these guys because they're I just try to keep it super simple super straightforward um, and I just glue them directly onto the base so I'll put some glue on the bottom of their foot again doesn't have to be a lot just a little bit Sit up here. So the base itself is plastic, the model itself is plastic, so again it's all gonna adhere together. But yeah, there you go. Bond's already set in. And you've got yourself a standard Cadian Guardsman. And then you can stand up the rank and file. So the big reason why I don't do a lot of the basing and stuff here is because I'm making so many of these guys that I don't really see a huge point in it. And who knows, maybe if I ever want to go like do, try to win some rewards or something for my army, maybe I'll do that. But I think it's pretty simple, just glue them on there and then paint your base whatever ones and then touch the rim up back with black. That's what I do is I do gray for the foot or for the uh, the basing, so it's a way it's different from what their actual garb is that they're wearing. And yeah, they all blend with each other, they look like they're all part of the same unit, and uh, it's not super hard, it's not going to necessarily break the bank, it's not going to break you making a bunch of different guards, because if you're getting started, you're probably going to be painting up and building a lot of these guys for the Astronaut Terran. I know even for my small 500 point combat patrol games, I have multiple squads of infantry, so, just one of these guys, you saw how quick it was I put together, but that time can add up over quite a bit. So, thank you guys for tuning in, checking it out, and uh, watching me put together a guardsman and struggling a little bit with those arms. Again, that's usually the hardest part, in my opinion, but the rest of it is pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and with some practice you can do pretty well, and this is my first time ever putting a model together on camera, so hopefully you guys appreciate that and those almost failed you all um as you probably see you like okay i got the standard guardsmen in here there are extra bits on your sprue to actually gribble them up or gussy them up a little bit you can keep bare bone just like this if you want to you can throw whatever else you want onto them too but these different kits these different sprues also give you these little canteen and bayonet or combat knife kits now since he doesn't have a bayonet on him, I'm going to choose one of these that have the knife still in there. That's totally up to you. So essentially what it gets you, um, you get yourself like a little water canteen. You get yourself a recharge pack for your last gun. And then you get yourself your knife. And so, twist this off. Just like what I like. Well. You got it off and then you're going to go ahead and glue this onto him right back here. That's going to give him just a little bit more detail um, that wouldn't normally be there. It's entirely up to you. Like so, for instance, like my sergeant I've got, I did not give him that stuff. 
it's one of my earlier kits that I went through and did. But some of my, most of my other soldiers, though, I did add that into their repertoire. Their little loadout, they've each got these put on there. It gives you just a little bit more that you actually like color up and make make good, but you don't necessarily need this. But I'm gonna throw this on here too so you guys can see everything fully completed. need a lot you need just a little bit all right there we go just kind of rake it across the back of it there because it's got a nice little curve because it's supposed to sit right on the back of his fatigues here kind of almost like it or right on his belt just that little bit extra detail onto him there to say all right this guy he's got everything he needs to actually go out so if he does happen to run out of his one of the charges he can definitely do that if he wants to and reload chances are he probably won't last that long but he could definitely sure hope so and then that's not the only like little bit of detail or greebly bit you could put on there too at the very top you've got you know the sergeant's helmet if you decided to go helmetless with him too you can throw a helmet on the on his side this here's another canteen and if you decided to equip yourself up with a grenade launcher this is actually a another grenade launcher canister that you can stick that in there act like it's a something to reload with get some more las gun charges um some frag grenades here as well too you don't have to have those if you don't want to but i recommend you do because a lot of these guys have frag grenades and if you're playing WYSIWYG or what you see is what you get you probably want to have that on there um, special weapons, you've got this on the other sprue, I just figured I'd show this to you here since I'm not building a special weapon guy here for the video. Um, you got chain sword and a las pistol for your sergeants. I do also use these for company commanders, so let me show you on my earlier kits, I actually broke it down and created a company commander. I, I cut off a little bit of a sprue to give him a handle. You can be very careful with cutting the hands off too and leave the handle and sand it down too. Um, I had some extra purity seal left over from my space marines that I used to kind of gussy him up and make him look like a war hero. I'll give him a little golden medal emblem here, show off his service. And uh, yeah, he's got himself a chainsword, he's got himself a lattice pistol, and he's using the normal guardsman body. I gave him a lasgun because I thought a lasgun strap across the back looks really cool, but got him running as a company commander, and now instead of just being a standard barebone guardsman, he is an HQ. He is a leader that can shout orders at these guys and tell them to shoot better, or to wound things better, or to survive better. But yeah, on here you've got an extra las gun that you can kind of use if you want one of your guys throwing a grenade, which is this grenade hand here. You use this on the right side. On the left side you use this hand, and then this hand holds this las gun. And uh, yeah, pretty much makes it look like it's throwing motion. You got your box caster here got a nice little slot here on the back. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can see that. It sits right onto the guardsman itself. So you just glue that in there, stick it on them, and it fits pretty well in their back. It allows them to have the box caster now on their back so they can shout fear. Company commanders can shout orders at them to then shout orders at other people. And then yeah, you've got your flamer and you've got your flamer fuel for it. This connects pretty well together. It looks pretty cool. And then yeah, that's what you've got as far as the standard sprue. The new Cadian shock troops, they also give you a extra sprue on top of the two, and that gets you a uh, plasma gun, sniper rifle, melted gun, um, several other different heads and stuff too, and a plasma gun and a power sword for your sergeant, or if you're making come up commanders, you can do that too, but I usually keep my guys bare bone to try and uh, help me feel more soldiers on my squads. But if you're like, hey, you bought the new kit and you didn't have this one from the start collecting box or you didn't buy the Brood Brothers kit, which I highly recommend you do, then yeah, you can run it like that too. But I want to make sure you guys got a chance to see that, yep, these go right on here when you're gluing it. But yeah, anyway, until the next time, you guys have fun rolling dice building your plastic crack models here and uh, 
you know, building things up for the Emperor. And uh, thanks for joining the Guard, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.